Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about the correct way to set ignition timing on small block and big block Ford engines. So let's talk about what is ignition timing before we go ahead and dive in. So ignition timing is the measurement of the rotation of the crankshaft of which the ignition is going to fire before the pistons at top dead center. Top dead center is when the pistons at its highest point it is not moving either up or down, it's kind of at that apex. So at top dead center is kind of what everything is correlated to. So when we look at kind of the timing, when you see 10 degrees advanced, that's actually 10 degrees before top dead center. During the ignition cycle, what happens is you have your, your piston coming up, you have, as it's coming up, you know, let's say 10 degrees before top dead center. As it ignites, it's going to light the air to fuel mix in the cylinder and it's gonna start exploding. When it hits that top dead center, that's the point when you want the maximum amount of pressure to occur and kind of when it's just about to start its way down. So then it, com it forces the piston back down. So that timing that we're setting here is exactly when that spark plug fires. What we're going to see is under different conditions, you actually need that spark plug to fire at different degrees of rotation before top dead center. So there's some situations when you're under higher RPM where the piston's moving faster, where you're going to want it to ignite the air and fuel 30 degrees before top dead center. So now we're going to go ahead and walk through how to set the base timing on the car. We're going to start here and then we're going to go through the uh, more advanced process of setting the advanced curve on the distributor. You need two tools. You need a timing light to be able to see what the current timing is. And then you need a open end or a wrench to be able to loosen the distributor to adjust the timing. All right, so to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the screw down here and then we're gonna adjust this as the engine's running. We're gonna move it clockwise to advance the timing to make it occur earlier and then we're going to turn it counterclockwise when we want to turn the timing back. So here we go. We're going to do this with the engine running. If you have vacuum advance, as seen on this distributor here, you're going to want to take off the line for now while you're setting the timing and plug it. All right, so now we're going to set the distributor advance curve. To do this, we're going to need to remove the cap from the distributor to get access to the springs and the weights beneath it. On this vehicle, we have an MSD setup, which is only going to have springs. It's not going to have weights that go with it. So we're going to go ahead, take the cap off and start adjusting it. Now with the cap off, we're gonna remove the rotor from the MSD distributor to expose the springs. All right, so we have the two blue advanced springs on the top. You can see the paint's still on there. Uh, these two, they control where the timing is all in by. So with these two springs here, these blue ones, the timing's all gonna be all in by around 2800 RPM. In order to change the total amount of timing that you get from the distributor, you need to change out this, you need to remove this blue nut and behind it is gonna be a colored bushing. Right now, I have the blue bushing in there, which is gonna limit me to a total of 21 degrees advance, which when we look at the calculation of total timing, I'm running 10 degrees base, 21 degrees advance. So that puts me at a total timing of 31 degrees overall which is really low for this engine. So what I'm gonna end up doing is turning it up. All right, to set the timing on the distributor, the first thing we need to do is find the advanced sheet or the timing sheet from MSD. So here's a version of it that we're gonna take a look through. 
First, we're going to select which chart we're going to use by looking at which springs we are using on the distributor itself. So looking at our distributor, we were using the two blue light springs. So we will focus on this chart here. On this chart, we're going to focus in a few different areas. Here is degrees on the left hand side, RPM on the bottom. With the bushing that we're using, our advanced stop bushing is blue. So we're going to be utilizing this line here. This line is the timing advanced curve, which is set by the distributor, the springs, and the advanced stop bushing. So looking at the timing advanced curve, we can see at idle, there really isn't too much of a change. You know, the timing really starts coming in post idle or around 1250 RPM. When we're using the blue bushing and we're using the two light blue springs, at 1500 RPM, we're adding about four degrees of timing. So we're a total of 14 degrees. So 10 base plus four advanced, 14 degrees. When we're all in at around 2800 or let's call it 3000 RPM, we're gonna be at a 21 degree total adder, which is gonna put us at 10 degrees base plus 21 degrees added to a total timing of 31 degrees. So that's how you use these distributor charts to set your advanced timing. So that's all it takes to set the timing on a small block Ford or a big block Ford engine. Thanks for tuning in today on Smacky's Garage. Don't forget to like and subscribe.